Hello. Out of nowhere, the other day, Brackies returned to YouTube and made a new tutorial video about Godot, a very popular open source game engine, where they create a new game. And in this video, we're going to be following a similar format and even using the same assets, although this time we'll be creating a game using Unreal Engine, another popular game engine. Even though it may not seem likely, Unreal Engine is capable of making 2D games, and we can use Blueprint, Unreal Engine's node-based system which allows people to create full games without writing a single line of code. Before we get started, if you want the project files for this game and want to learn how to create other full games in Unreal Engine, like a 2D platformer, FPS game, and more, make sure to subscribe to my website, Unreal University. There'll be a link to it in the description of this video. With all that said, let's get started. I'm in the Epic Games launcher, and I'm going to launch a new Unreal Engine project. Okay, so I'm just going to go over to the game section, and I'm going to select a blank template because we're going to be coding this game from complete scratch. For the um, project name, I'm just going to call this my Brack Keys 2D Game. Also, in the project defaults, make sure to select Blueprints. We're going to be coding this game entirely using Blueprints. Next, let's go Create, and this will open up Unreal Engine. So we have three main tabs. This main tab is the viewport. This basically allows us to see how our game will look. Then we have the outliner tab. This basically displays everything inside of our viewport. So for example, I can select this directional light and if I double click, it will take me to where it is. Then we have the details. This basically tells me the settings I can change about the object that I've selected in the outliner tab. So here I have this um, directional light. I can change the light color to maybe be red. So those are the three main um, tabs that you'll basically work with when you're working in Unreal Engine. Another thing I like to do is just go over to the content drawer. This basically displays a list of all of the files inside of our project. And I normally like to click dock and layout. That way it's permanently there and I can easily access all of the files inside of my project. Okay, so now that we've done that, the first thing we're gonna do is create a 2D character that we can play our game as. To do that, we're gonna create a new level. So if we just go to our content folder, right click, and create a new folder and just call this levels. Then I want us to go to the tab here where it says file and click new level, then select basic and go create. We don't need to save anything. Once we're in this new level, we want to save this level. So just click the save icon. It will ask us where we want to save this level. Just go over to our levels folder and I'm just gonna call this my example map. We can just go save. Okay. So now that we're in a new level, the next thing we're gonna do is create a 2D character which we can play our game as. Somewhere in the description of this video, there's gonna be a link to this Brackies platformer bundle. This includes a bunch of free 2D assets which we're gonna to use to build our game. Make sure to download it. Once you've downloaded it, create a new folder inside of your Unreal Engine project called Sprites. So I'll right click, go to new folder, and I'm just gonna call this Sprites. Then if we double click and head inside here, I installed the Brackies um, platformer assets. We just want to open it up, go over to the sprites folder and just select everything and just drag and import it into this um, folder. In Unreal Engine, when you import um, images, sometimes they'll be a bit weird. In order to fix that, just hold shift on your keyboard and select every single image, right click and go sprite actions and apply paper 2D texture settings. This will help make sure that the image imports correctly. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is set up this knight character. If we just right click and create a new folder and call this knight, then drag the knight image into this folder and go move here. Next, what we need to do is just right click on this image and go sprite actions and go extract sprites. Unreal Engine will automatically extract the sprites from this image. So right now this knight comes with, I think, five different animations, so an idle one, a running one, a rolling one, a hit one, and a death one. We basically want to extract the animations so that we can basically combine them to make little flip books which our character can use. So if we just click extract, this will extract the image so that we can make them sprites. We want to select the first four um, sprites, right click on them and go create flip book and just call this the night idle. So this will be the idle animation that our knight plays. We just want to double click and open it up. And right now you can see it's playing kind of fast. 
Right now it's going at 15 frames per second. If I change this to be something like one, then it's going to be a lot slower. I'm going to make mine, let's say five. Or even that's a bit slow, so maybe, maybe six. Okay, we can save this. The next, we want to create a running flipbook. So we want to go from this one all the way to this one. So from Night Sprite 9 to Night Sprite 24. I'm holding Shift to select everything. Right click and go Create Flipbook. And just call this the Night Run. We can double click and open this up. I think this is a bit fast, so I'm going to make it 10 frames per second. Or even 8. Okay, we can save this. Now that we have two animations for our character, the next thing we're going to do is set up our character. So I'm just going to go to my content folder, right click and create a new folder. And I'm just going to call this my blueprints. We want to double click and open this up. Then right click and go blueprint class, go to all classes. And then we're going to look for paper character. So this is a blueprint for a 2D character. We just want to go select and just call this the night underscore blueprint. Open this up. And then we just want to go to the components. This is where we can add things to our blueprint. And we just want to select the sprite and then go to source flipbook and change this to be the night idol. So now we should hopefully see our night character. This capsule represents my night character's collision. And we can see it's kind of big. So if we just select our sprite, then click this anchor icon. This will make it so when we um, change a value here, it will change uniformly. Select it and change it to be three. This will make our night character a bit bigger. Although you'll see he's still not big enough to fit our capsule. So if we just select our capsule and we just want to play around with the capsule half height and the capsule radius so our character fits in it. So something like this. So minus 25 on the half height and 15 on the radius. Okay. Next, in Unreal Engine, in order for us to basically see our character when we're playing as them, we need to add a camera to our character. So to do that, we just want to go to our components and go add and look for a spring arm. Before you add the spring arm, just make sure you've deselected so that you've not selected anything. Then go add and look for a spring arm. And right now, this isn't really facing our character, so we just want to select it. Then go over here where it says select and rotate objects. And just rotate it in the Z axis so it's minus 90 degrees. We're going to attach our camera to the end of this spring arm. So with the spring arm selected, we just want to go add and look for a camera. Now you'll notice the camera is not facing the correct direction, so just make sure to rotate it 90 degrees. And now if I select my spring arm and I play around with the target arm length, you'll see that because my camera is attached to it, it moves with it. And you can also play around with the offset, so maybe I'll make it have an offset in the X if I wanted to. But for now, I'm just going to leave it at zero. Okay, next we can just compile this. The next thing we're going to do is make it so we start our game off as this night character. In order to do that, we need to create a game mode. The game mode will basically tell Unreal Engine what character we want to start our game as. So, in order to create a game mode inside of our Blueprints folder, if we just right click, go Blueprint Class, and select Game Mode Base, and I'm just going to call this my 2D Game Mode, we want to open this up, and for the default pool class, change this to be the night blueprint. Compile this, close this, then if we go over to window and to and to world settings, it's going to ask us for our game mode, and we want to change this to be our 2D game mode. Now in our basic level, it comes with this player start. This is going to be where our player starts inside of our game. So now if I click the play button, I'm going to start my game as this 2D night character. Nice. Although you may notice we can't really move or control our night character. So the next thing we need to do is set up some input so we can actually move and control them. So I'm just going to go to my content folder, right click, and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm just going to call it input. Then we want to open this up and we want to right click, go input and select input mapping context. This will basically store the controls for our game. We just want to call this our controls underscore input mapping context. 
Next, we need to set up the specific keys and buttons that our player is going to need to press in order to control our character. So if we just right click, we want to go input and select input action and call this first one move underscore input action. Then we want to create another one. So we just right click, go input and select input action and call this the jump underscore input action. For the move input action, just double click and open it up. And we want to change the value type to be an access 1D float. You'll see why later on. Next, we just want to open up our control input mapping context. And here we add the different inputs that we made, such as our moving one and our jumping one. So we just want to go add action mapping. And for this first one, select our jump input action. In order for our player to perform the jump input action, I'm going to make it so my player has to press this spacebar button. So I'm going to look for spacebar. And I can also just click here, add another control binding, and I can make it so when the player also presses the up button, it will perform the jump input action. So if my player presses spacebar or the up key on their keyboard, it will perform the jump input action. Next, let's create another action mapping for when we want our player to move. So I'll select move input action. And I'm going to look for the left key. And then I just want to add another one for the right key because my player is going to press either the left or the right key in order to move. And for the left one, we just want to go over to modifiers and then just click here and select the negate modifier. You'll see what this does in a second. This basically just makes this value negative, which will help our player move in the opposite direction. We can save this and close this. And we just want to go back to our blueprints and open up the night blueprint character. Next, we want to go over to the event graph. This is where we'll do the majority of coding for our character. We want to go over to event begin play. So this will fire as soon as our game starts and event begin play, we want to add the controls to our character. So to do this, we can just right click and look for get controller. Then we just want to drag up here and look for cast to player controller. Then from here, we can drag off and look for get enhanced local player subsystem. This is how we add input to Unreal Engine. And we just want to drag off here and look for is valid. And if this is, then we can just drag off here and look for add mapping context. And we just want to select the controls input mapping context. And this will add our controls to our game. Okay, next, we just want to right click and look for the move input action. So when my player presses either the left or the right arrow key, this trigger node is going to fire. And when that happens, I want to move my player character. So I just want to drag up here and look for add movement input. And for the scale value, we just want to connect from action value into here. For the world direction, we want to put one. In 2D games, our player character moves along the X axis. So if I just select them, and I go to select and translate. This red arrow represents the X axis and this is the axis my 2D character will be moving in. One more thing, if we just drag off here and look for print string and connect this into here and then go compile and I close this and go play. When I press the right mouse button, you'll see it print strings one. When I press the left mouse button, it print strings negative one and we can see I move in the opposite direction. Okay, nice. So now our character can move. I'm just going to delete this. The next thing I want to do is make it so my character can jump. So if we just right click and then look for the jump input action. Because we didn't make this one in axis 1D, we can't um, get the value of it, but we don't need it for the jumping one. For this one, we just instead want to click this um, little arrow. And when the player presses the spacebar button or the up key, this started node will also fire. And what we want to do is just drag off here and look for jump. And when my player um, stops holding the jump button, this completed node will fire. So we just want to drag off here and look for stop jumping. And now if I go compile, close this and I go play. When I press the up button, 
or spacebar, my character will jump. Nice. We can actually change our player character's jumping settings. So if I just open them up and select character movement, in the details, if I look for air control, right now it's set to 0 0.05. So this goes between a value of zero and one. The closer we make this to one, the more control the player's gonna have when they're in the air. I'm gonna make mine 0 0.7. We can also play around with how high they can jump. So if I just look for jump here in search, we can see the jump Z velocity is 420. If I make this 600 and go compile and I play my game, we can see I jump very high. I think I may have made it six, whoops, I made it 60,000. So let's just change this back to be 420. But that's how you change how high the player can jump. Okay. So I changed mine back to 420. Next, I want to make it so my player character basically is facing the correct direction when they are moving towards the left or the right. So if we just go back to our knight character and when our player character moves, we want to check the value of their um, action value. So if we just drag off here, we want to check to see if this is greater than 0 0.3. If this is, that means my player character must be moving towards the right. because when my player presses the um, right key, the value of this is one. So we just want to drag off here and then look for the select, and we want to select select float. Then we just want to drag in our sprite and drag off here and look for set rotation. And we want this one, set world rotation. We're gonna right click here and look for split structure pin. And if I just go to my viewport and select my um, sprite, and click this little X here. Right now, to start off with, my character has a um, rotation of zero in the Z axis. If I change this to be 180, my character is facing the opposite direction. This is what we're gonna make the value when my player character is moving towards the left. So if I just make this zero again, then go back to my event graph, I'm gonna connect from here into Z. So when this is greater than 0.3, we're gonna make the value of this zero. However, if this is less than 0.3, or this condition is false, that means my player character must be moving towards the left. So I'm gonna make this 180. And that, and that will make my player character face the opposite direction. So I'll connect from here into here. And if I just go compile, close this and go play, it seems like I got them the other way around. So, so sorry, if this is greater than um, 0.3, we want to pick A. So we want to make this 0. And if it's not true, we want to make this um, B. Okay, so let's go compile and test this out again. So I go play. When I move towards the right, I'm facing the right. And when I move towards the left, I'm facing the left. Nice. Next, I want to add some animations to my character. So we set up, in, so we set up an idle and a running animation. So let's make it so when my player character is moving, they do their running animation. So in some free space, I'm just gonna right click and look for event tick. The way this node will work is every single frame, it will update and every single frame, we want to update our player character's animation. So if I just right click, I'm gonna search for add custom event and I'm just gonna call this handle animation. And when I um, call this node, what I'm gonna do is get my um, sprite and we just want to drag off here and look for set flipbook. And we want to add a one for running. Then we just want to copy this, paste it, so control C and control V, and add one for idle. Then we want to drag in our character movement. We want to drag off here, and we want to get the velocity of this. So this will tell us the velocity that our character is moving at. We want to drag off here and look for vector length. This will convert this into a float value. And if this value is greater than zero, that means my player character must be moving. So if we just drag off here and look for the branch node and connect from here into here, if this is true, then we want our player character to play their running animation because they're moving. If this is false, we want our player character to play their idle animation as they're not moving. And then event tick, we want to run the handle animation. So every single frame, it'll make sure our player character is showing the correct animation. We can compile this, close this, and go play. So when I move, I do my um, running animation. When I stop, I do my idle animation. Nice.
Okay, so now that we set up a basic 2D character, the next thing we're going to do is design a 2D level for our character. To do this, we can just go over to our sprites folder and I'm just going to right click and create a new folder and call this my world tile set. Let's drag the world tile set inside of here. Then we just want to right click on this and go sprite actions and go create tile set. Double click and open this up. Right now, if I select somewhere, we can see it's quite big. We can change the tile size by playing with this value here. We want to change this to be 16 by 16. Most tile sizes are normally 16 by 16 or 32 by 32. You'll now see when I select something, my arm square fits around it. We can use these tiles to design 2D levels inside of Unreal Engine. And we can even make it so some tiles have collision. So if I select this tile here, I can go add box, and you can see it's going to add this um, collision box around it. So now if I were to place this tile inside of my level, it's going to have collision on it. So I'm just going to add collision to these following tiles. Okay, so I've added tiles to the following collision. If I just click colliding tiles, we'll be able to see all of the tiles which I've given collision. There are also these bridges here. I'm just gonna go add collision here. For this one, it's fine. Although if I go here and I go add box, you may notice the box is slightly above this um, tile. We can easily adjust this. If I just select it, I can move this down. Now, when I move this down, it moved it by quite a lot. We can specify how much we move it down by. If I go over here, right now it's set to um, 10. So we have snap size of 10. If I change this to be one, I'm gonna get a lot more precision when I move this down. So I can be a lot more accurate when I'm adding this tile. Okay, for now, I'm just gonna save this. Now that we've designed our tile set, we can design a tile map, which we can place on our level. So I'm just gonna right click on this and go create tile map. We can double click and open this up. Right now, this has a map width of four and a map height of four. I can easily change this to be something like, let's say 60 by um, 20. And I can just zoom out with my mouse. And this is gonna be the size of my tile map. It's very easy to basically paint with tiles inside of Unreal Engine. If I just go here, I can view my tile set. And if say I just select this tile, I'll actually select this one because it's a bit more clear. When I'm on paint, I can easily paint my tile, just like this. If I want to erase a tile, I can select the erase button and then easily erase everything. I added quite a lot, so I'm just gonna press Control Z to undo everything I did. And then there's one final option. I can select fill, and if I just select it, it's gonna fill my whole tile with this specific um, one. Okay, I'm just gonna press Control Z to undo this. I'm now going to design a very simple tile set. So I've just selected this tile, I know it has collision, and I'm just gonna go paint, and I can easily just add some tiles here. And if we want to, we can position tiles on top of one another to create some nice background effects. So to do that, if I just click this add new layer, this will add a layer on top of this one. And what we actually wanna do is just click this little down arrow. This will make it so this layer is behind layer one, and I can easily select one of my background effects like this one, and with layer two selected, I can easily position it so it's behind this layer. So let me just make this whole bit blue. Okay, let's save this, close it. And I actually want to design our um, 2D level in a completely new level because this level has some lighting and it can kind of affect the way the 2D game looks. So if we just go over to file, go new level, and this time select empty level, go create. And right now everything is pitch black. Let's just drag in our tile set somewhere. And I know from experience, this may be kind of small. So I'm just gonna scale it up to five. So it's a lot bigger. Okay. I'm also just gonna go quickly add things to the project and go basics and select a player start. So this will be where my player starts. I'm just going to move him to zero, zero, zero. And just move the tile set. So I start here. And one more thing, we want to make it so our player and our tile set 
start in the same um, Y location. That way they're on the same layer. So this is in layer zero on the Y axis. So I'm also gonna make this on layer zero. Next, we just wanna to go to world settings and make sure our game mode is the 2D game mode. Okay, so now if I click the play button, we start as my 2D character and I should be able to stand on these tiles. Nice. In Unreal Engine, there are some lighting settings which may affect your game. So if we just go over to edit, go project settings and go auto exposure, just make sure this is unchecked. And then if we go over to our night blueprint character, we want to select the camera and in the search, look for brightness, click mini V and max EV. The higher we make these values, the darker the game is going to be. The lower we make these values, the lighter the game is going to be. I'm just going to make mine one and one. I'll go compile. And we have our 2D level. Nice. Okay, I'm just going to design my um, 2D level so it's a bit nicer. Feel free to do the same. So I'm just going to add a bit more um, background, I think. And now I'm just going to fill this out. And I'm just gonna make my player start here for now. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is add some platforms. So if we just go over to our sprites folder, right click and create a new folder, I just call this platforms, then drag the platforms image into this folder. Then we just wanna right click on it, go to sprite actions and go extract sprites. Now, earlier we extracted sprites using the auto method although Unreal Engine can't tell that these are two separate sprites. So if we just go to Sprite Extract Method, we can change this to be Grid, and we can actually specify how we want Unreal Engine to extract these sprites. And to be honest, I only really need this platform. So I'm gonna extract my sprite in a way where it only leaves this platform. I'm just gonna tell you the settings that I'm gonna use. Okay, so I have a cell width of 32, a cell height of 16, and a margin in the X of 16. So this is kind of an offset. You can play around with these values to basically extract the sprites in different ways, but this is all I want for now, so I'm just gonna go extract. Okay, so we've now extracted these platforms. The next thing we're gonna do is create a platform which the player can kind of jump onto. If we go over to our Blueprints folder, let's right click and go Blueprint class, select an actor, and just call this the platform underscore blueprint. We want to open this up and then go to components and go add and look for a sprite. And we want this one, a paper sprite. For the source sprite, let's select one of the platforms. So it's called platforms underscore sprite. Let's select this one. And with the anchor checked, let's scale it up to um, two. Okay, let's just compile this, close this, drag this somewhere into our level and make sure we put this on layer zero. That's the same layer that our um, player character starts in. And I'm just gonna go play. Okay, so we have this platform which my player can jump onto. Nice, the next thing I wanna do is make it so my player can jump underneath this platform onto it. So let's set that up. I'm gonna go back to my um, platform blueprint. I can also go here and open it up. I'm actually gonna make this a bit bigger, so I'm gonna make it 2.5. And then the next thing we wanna do is just go to components and go add and look for a box collision. Next, we just wanna move this box collision up a bit. And because we're gonna be testing this with our player character, it's gonna be helpful to see this. So with this box selected, go over to details and look for hidden. And we want this one hidden in game. Make sure that this is unchecked. And the idea here is, we're gonna make it so this platform has no collision. So if we just select it, scroll down and go to collision and make it no collision. Then when my player character basically jumps up from underneath this platform, or if my player is falling down and they arrive on this platform, when they overlap this box, we're gonna make it so this platform will turn on and have collision. And when my player leaves this box, we're gonna make it so this platform will no longer have collision. So I'm just gonna move this box up a bit slightly then we wanna go over to our details, scroll down and go to on component begin overlap. So when our player overlaps this box, we're gonna make it have collision. So if we just drag off other actor, 
and look for the equals node. We're going to check to see if it's equal to our player character. So if we just right click and look for get player character, connect this into here. Then we want to drag off here and have a branch. If this is true, then we want to drag in our paper sprite, drag off here and look for set collision. And we want this one set collision enabled and change this to be collision enabled queries and physics and connect from true into here. Then we just want to select our box again, scroll down and go to on component end overlap. And we can just copy all of these nodes. So I'm just gonna select with my mouse, control C and control V, connect from other actor into here, from here into here. Although this time I'm gonna set it to be no collision. When my player leaves this box, we're gonna tell the game that we want the paper sprite to have no collision. Let's go compile and let's test this all out. So if I go play and I jump up from underneath this platform, it has collision, I can walk off it and then I can jump up on it again. Okay, so I was finding the camera did move slightly um, when I um, jumped up underneath this. So if we just select our platform and let's go to select and scale objects. I'm just gonna scale this down a bit. And then we also just wanna move this down a bit. Okay, let's try this. I'm gonna move it slightly up. We want it, so basically, the top of our knight's helmet is at the top of this collision, kind of. So let me just do that. Okay, so that's a bit better. When it was a bit lower, my knight is kind of colliding as I um, go through the platform. And then one other thing, this hasn't happened now. Let me um, showcase an example. So let's just drag in a sprite. So I'm going to go to my platforms. I'm going to drag in this platform. I'm going to move it to location zero. And I'm going to make it two. If I go play, and let's say I just jump into it. Okay, it's not happening, but sometimes the player character can actually fall off of the world. So in order to prevent that, if we just go over to our night blueprint, select the character movement, and in the details, look for constrain, and we wanna go constrain to plane, and select the Y axis. This will make it so our player character is locked in the Y axis, and they can't accidentally be pushed out of the world. So I'm just going to delete that. The next thing we wanna do is go over how to create a moving platform. It's gonna be kind of similar to our normal platform blueprint, so I'm just gonna right click on it, and go duplicate, and I'm just gonna call this my moving platform underscore blueprint. I'm gonna open it up. We can delete all of the nodes inside of here and delete this um, box. Select the paper sprite and just change it so this actually has collision. So make it block all. And in order to make this move, we can just go to components and go add and look for the interp to movement. This will make it so, as the name suggests, this can move. Select the interp to movement. And we just want to scroll up and go to behavior and change this to be ping pong. This will basically allow it to move from one location to another. That's what the ping pong means. There are other ways we can make it move, although if we want this platform to move backwards and forwards, we want it to be on the ping pong. We also just wanna to go to control points here and add two control points. So click this twice. This is gonna be the points that my platform is gonna move between. And the duration is gonna be how long it takes my platform to move between these two different points. Let's compile this. Close it, and actually, let's just make this one a slightly different color, so it's a bit more clear. So I'm gonna make it this um, sprite one. We can compile this. Then let's drag it into our level somewhere. In the location, I'm gonna put zero. Then we just want to select it, scroll down, and select the interpreter movement. And at index zero, we can leave all of these values the same. Although if we go to index one, we're gonna move our platform in the X axis. So I'm gonna put a value of let's say 50. And if I just go here and click simulate, it's gonna simulate how my platform's gonna be when it's in the game. So 50 is not that much. So let's try a higher value. So I'll just select it and let's make it 400. And I'm gonna make the duration six, so it takes longer. Okay, let's go simulate. And as we can see, it's gonna take six seconds to basically bounce between those two different points. 
maybe 600 was a bit much. So let's just make it, let's say, sorry, I made it 400. Let's make it 320. And I'll make the duration three, but we can add different platforms to our level and basically make them move over different periods of time and to different places. So let's just change this to selected viewport. And I should be able to stand on this platform. And as you can see, it's moving. Nice. The next thing we're gonna do is create some coins which my player character can actually pick up. So if we just go over to our night blueprint and let's go over to the variables tab here and let's create a new variable and just call it coins. Then we just want to click the X here if you have something there and change this to be an integer. So an integer is a whole number. We just wanna compile this and that's all we need to do here for now. Next, let's close this, go over to our sprites, right click and create a new folder and just call it coin and move the coin image into this folder. Then we just want to select the coin image, go sprite actions and go extract sprites and just go extract. Then hold shift and select all of these sprites, right click and go create flipbook. And we can just call this our coin one. I'm gonna make mine a bit slower, so let's make it, let's make it 10. Then go save. Next, we wanna go over to our blueprints. Then we just want to right click and create a new blueprint class, select an actor and just call this our coin underscore blueprint. Open this up and let's go add and look for a paper flip book. For the paper flip book, let's select the coin one and I'm just gonna make it two so it's a bit bigger. And we just wanna go add and look for a box collision. And just scale this box collision so it fits around your coin. And then I'm just gonna scroll down with the box collision selected and go on component begin overlap. This time we want to drag off other actor and look for cast to night blueprint. So this is basically going to check to see if my knight overlapped this actor. And if it did, I can now reference all of the data inside of my knight character. So what I actually wanna do is get the coins that my knight has. And then I just want to drag off here and look for the increment int. This will increase the value of this by one. After I do this, I just wanna drag off here and look for destroy actor. And this will basically destroy this current blueprint. Let's go compile and test this all out. So I'm just gonna drag a coin into my level, move it to layer zero in the um, Y, and to quickly duplicate an item inside of Unreal Engine, hold the Alt button whilst you've selected an item you want to duplicate, and that'll quickly allow you to create a duplicate of it. Let's just go play. And when I overlap this coin, we can see it disappears, and it's added it to my knight. Nice. Later on, we're gonna set up a HUD, which will basically display the amount of coins that we have. Oh, one more thing. I realized we've actually never saved this level. So let's do this before our project crashes or something. So let's go save. And let's just call this my um, level one. The next thing we're gonna do is create a simple enemy. If we go over to our sprites folder, let's right click and create a new folder. Just call this our enemy. Then move the slime green image into this folder. Then we just want to right click on this image, go sprite actions and extract sprites. Change this to grid and change this to 24 by 24. Then go extract. Now we only need from slime green sprite seven to slime green sprite four. Only these four, right click on them and go create flip book. And we can just call this our slime green. I'm gonna make it five frames per second, actually eight. Just save this, close this, then go over to our blueprints folder. We want to right click and go blueprint class. We want to go to all classes and look for a paper character. Select them and just call this the enemy underscore BP. Open it up and go to the sprite. Change this to be the slime green and I'm gonna scale it up a bit. So I'm gonna make it three. And then we also wanna make the capsule fit around it. So let's just do that. Okay, once you've done that, we just wanna go over to our event graph. And in some free space, we want to basically find the event tick. And event tick, just drag up here. 
and look for add movement input. The y direction is going to be one because we want our um, enemy to move in the x axis. And then we just want to right click and look for add custom event and just call this change direction. So we're going to call this whenever we want our enemy to change direction. And what we want to do is just drag off here and look for the flip flop node. First one we call this, we want to drag in our sprite, drag off here and look for set world rotation. By default, our enemy is going to start with a um, rotation of zero. That means they're moving towards the right. So when we call this, we're going to make them first face the left direction. And then we're going to make our enemy move towards the left. So I'm going to connect from A into here. Then to make our enemy move towards the left, I'm just going to right click on this world direction and promote this to a variable. Compile this and make sure it starts with a value of one in the X. Then we just want to drag this in, set it and make sure it's minus one. Then connect this into here. This will make it so our enemy moves in the opposite direction. We then just want to copy all of these nodes, paste them again, connect this into B. Although this time for Z, make sure this is zero and make sure this is set to one. Then finally, let's go back to our viewport select the capsule, scroll down, and we just want to find this one, simulate generate hit events. Scroll down again, then go to on component hit. When this hits something, we're just gonna call the change direction um, custom event that we made. So if I drag off here and look for change direction, let's compile this. And then I'm just going to go back to my world tile set map. Let's scroll down. And if I click the search button, it will take me towards it. And I'm going to build a bit for my enemy. So I'm just going to, whoops. I'm just going to press control Z to undo that. And I actually want to make this on layer um, one. I can also press this eye icon to hide the layer. We want to go to layer one. I'm going to change this to be paint. And then I'm going to build a little um, box for my enemy. So I'm going to place my enemy here. And when my enemy hits um, these walls, it's basically going to change direction. Let's just go save, close this. And I also want to basically see this. And then let's go over to our blueprints folder. And let's drag in our enemy. Let's make sure they are in zero in the Y. Our enemy is actually kind of small. I may make it a bit bigger, but for now, let's just leave it. And to test it out, we can just click the simulate button. And as you can see, my enemy is moving whenever it hits one of these walls. Um, it turns around. Now my enemy is moving very fast. Let's make it a bit slower. So if I open up my enemy, let's go over to character movement and in the details, let's look for walk speed and let's change the max walk speed from 600 to something like 200. I'm not sure if my Unreal Engine is glitching, but it keeps like adjusting this number. Okay, so I made it 200 this time. And as we can see, my enemy is moving at a much more normal rate. I can play my game and I can see my enemy in there. Okay, maybe let's make our enemy a bit slightly more bigger. So make it 3.3. .3. Okay, we can close this. The next thing we're gonna do is make it so the enemy can actually kill our player. If we just select our enemy and open up their blueprint, go over to components and select the enemy, then go over to details. And if we just look for tag, I'm gonna go over to actor and just go add element. And we just wanna add a tag called enemy. Then we just wanna compile and save this. Next, we just wanna go over to our sprites folder, find the knight, and we just wanna scroll down and we're gonna create a flip book for when our knight dies. So we're gonna select from sprite 43 all the way to sprite 46. Right click and go create flip book and just call this the knight death. Let's make it 14 frames. Okay, so when our knight dies, we're gonna play this little animation. If we just go back to our blueprint folder, open up the knight blueprint, and we just want to find our knight's capsule. Scroll down, 
and make sure that the simulate generate hit event is true. Scroll down again and go to on component hit. So on component hit, if our player hits something with the enemy tag, we're gonna kill our player. So if I just drag off other actor, so if I look for actor has tag, and the tag is gonna be enemy, make sure this is spelled the same way that you spelt the tag when you added it to your enemy, otherwise this won't work. Then, if this is true, we're gonna tell the game that our player is dead. So if we just create a new variable, and call it is dead, question mark, and for this variable, make sure it's a boolean. So when this happens, we're gonna tell the game our player is dead, so I'm just gonna drag it in, look for set is dead, and make sure that this is checked, and connect from true into here. When our player is dead, we're not gonna allow them to move or jump. So if we just go over to the bit where we make our player character's movement, we can just drag off triggered and look for branch. And we can drag in this is dead variable. Right click on the true, right click here and break the link. As long as our player is not dead, we will allow them to move. We can just copy this. And we're gonna add these nodes before our player character jumps. So I'm just gonna paste this here, connect from started into here and from false into here. And then finally, we want to go over to the handle animation. When our um, player is dead, we want to play the um, death animation that we just made. So from false into here. And when we're dead, we can drag in our um, sprite, then drag off here and look for set looping and make sure this is unchecked. By default, all of the um, flipbook animations loop. However, when we die, we don't want to do this. And then finally, we want to just play the um, night death flipbook. So I'm just going to copy these nodes and paste them here. And for the flipbook, I'm going to change this to be the night death. Okay, let's go compile and test this all out. I will play my game. And one thing, I should have actually changed this earlier. My knight moves very fast, so let's just go over to our character movement. And in the details, let's look for walk speed. And I'm going to make this 300. Okay, so they move much more normally now. Okay, so when the enemy goes towards me, I die, and then um, I can't move or anything. You may notice the knight is kind of hovering in the ground. So if we go back to our knight blueprint. After um, we tell the game that our player is dead, we just want to drag in our sprite, drag off here, and look for add local offset. Then in the Z, put a value of minus 10. This will basically make our sprite move down by 10 units in the Z axis. Compile this. And let's go play and test this out. Okay, so when I died, we can see I um, moved down. One thing I noticed is that um, basically this is happening every time my enemy hits my player character. We only want this to happen once. So after here, if we drag off here and look for the do once node. Let's compile this and uh, test it out. Okay, nice. My player may also be able to die if say they fall off of the world. So let's create a new blueprint. Let's select an actor and just call this our kill volume underscore blueprint. We want to open it up, go add and look for a box collision. Scroll down and just go to on component begin overlap. And if we just drag off other actor and cast to our knight blueprint, when our knight overlaps this um, box, we can just go back to our knight blueprint and I'm just gonna right click and look for add custom event and call this fallen off world. And I'm gonna connect from here into the do once. Compile this. And then I'm going to call the Fallen Off of World. 
the full on off of world custom event, I'll compile this. And then one more thing, two seconds after my um, knight dies, we want to reload our game. So I'm just gonna drag off here and have a delay of two seconds. And then we just want to drag off here and look for the get current level name. This will get the name of the current level we're in. Then we can just drag off here and look for open level by name and connect from here into here. And this will reload our level. Okay, let's go compile, close this. And then I'm gonna drag in my kill volume. Let's make sure it's on um, axis zero in the Y axis. Let's go over to select and scale objects and scale this across the bottom of your um, level. Let's go play and let's die by falling off of the world. So I'll avoid my enemy. I'll go here and we can see I die. Then two seconds later, I'm reloaded. Okay, one more thing. When I die, I actually want to um, detach my player character's camera. That way it doesn't continuously uh, keep falling with them. That way if I die by falling off of the world, my camera is no longer following my um, player. So let's just go back to our night blueprint. And before we do this, I'm just going to drag off here. And we're gonna look for detach from component camera. And for everything, make it keep world. Let's compile this. And we can test this out again. Okay, so when I hit the volume, we can see my camera no longer moves with my player character. And that looks a bit better. If I had made these platforms a bit higher and the um, kill volume a bit higher, this would work a bit better. But for now, hopefully you understand the concept of what I'm trying to create. The next thing we're gonna do is add some UI. So we're gonna create a HUD, which will display how many coins my player character has collected. Before we do that, we're gonna import a new font that we're gonna use with our UI. So if we just go over to our content folder, right click and create a new folder, and just call this fonts, open it up, then briefly close your Unreal Engine project. And in the brackies asset, there should be a folder called fonts. Let's um, use the pixel operator eight bold. Drag it in to your Unreal Engine project and just click yes. This should import the font into Unreal Engine. Next, we just want to go back to our blueprints folder, right click and go user interface, select a widget, Select the user widget and just call this the um, HUD underscore widget blueprint. Open this up and then in the palette, look for a canvas panel. Drag this in. Then we want to look for a horizontal box. Drag this in and for the horizontal box, go to anchor and make sure it's anchored to the top left. This is gonna be where we display it. I'm just gonna increase the size of mine a bit Then look for some text and drag this text inside of the horizontal box. Select the text. And then we should be able to go over to font. And then we should be able to see the pixel operator font that we imported. So here it is pixel operator eight bold font. And as you should see, it should change the um, font of this to be this pixel art font. We just want this to say score and then have a colon. And we also just want to increase the size of this. So let's make it 100, actually that's a bit big. Let's make it 64. Then let's expand the um, score a bit more. Then we're gonna look for another piece of text and just drag this into the horizontal box. And we also want this to be size 64 and for the font of this to be the pixel art font. We can just change this to be a number like one. For this um, number text though, we wanna make sure it's a variable. So let's just call this our coins and make sure it is a variable. Then we just wanna go over to our graph, right click and look for add custom event and just call this update coins. So we're gonna call this whenever our player character collects a coin. And what we're gonna do is just drag in our coins, get them, then drag up here and look for set text. 
and we want this one set text text and then we want to create a new variable and call this our night for the variable type change this to be a um, night so the night bp so this is the character that we created make sure it's instance editable and exposed on spawn you'll see why in a second then we just want to drag in our night get them and then drag off here and get the amount of coins that they have and connect from here into here this will convert this from an integer into a text that we can see on our screen and connect from update coins into here then go compile close this go back to our night blueprint character and we just want to go to the event begin play after we add our controls to our game let's drag off here and look for the create widget the widget we're going to create is going to be our hud widget blueprint and you'll notice there is a slot for the night because we made this var because when we made this variable inside of our hud we made it instance editable and exposed on spawn it's asking us what our night is going to be because this basically needs a way to reference our night so we can just drag off here and look for self that way when we're creating um, this hud from our night we have a reference to what the night is then we're just going to right click here promote it to a variable and call this our hud and then we want to add this to our viewport and this will add our hud to our screen then we just want to compile this close this and go back to our coin blueprint and before we destroy this actor we actually just want to drag off this knight get their hud reference and then call the update coins so i'll call the update coins and then we'll destroy this actor this way it will update the amount of coins that we have on our hud and then destroy this coin actor let's go compile close this and press play so i start with a um, score of one when i collect another coin it goes to two and when i collect another one it goes to three if i just click this again i start um with a score of one so let me just change that if I go back to my hard widget blueprint, I make this um, one. Let's just change this to be zero because we want to start with zero coins. Okay, so this starts with zero. Then I collect a coin, it goes to one. Then it goes to two and three. So nice, with this we now have an accurate HUD. Next, I want to add my player character's jumping animation. I actually never added that jumping animation. So if we just go over to the sprites folder and over to the knight, and you want to select the following sprites so from sprite 31 all the way to sprite 34. right click on this and go create flipbook and call this night jump so this is an animation of our night jumping maybe it's a bit fast so we can make it 10. and then let's go over to our night blueprint and go over to our handle animation i'm going to move it again and we want to have a check to see if our character is in the air so if we just drag off this character movement look for is falling and then we're going to have another branch so i'm just going to move this here so if we drag off here and have a branch if is falling is false then we will basically just do our idle or running animation however if is falling is true, that means my character is in the air, so we're going to play the jumping animation. So I'll just copy this, and I'm going to change this to be the night jump. Let's go compile, close this, and go play. And as you could see, when my character is jumping or falling, it plays that um, jumping animation. Nice. Okay, so I finished designing my level. One other thing, let's just go back to our platform blueprint and go back to the box and make sure to reselect hidden in game and make sure that's checked that way it's hidden in the game i've also gone ahead and changed my enemy speed to 45 so it's a lot slower okay let's test out the game so i have my knight i can collect some coins we have this enemy which i should avoid also one other thing um right now our camera is in perspective mode unreal engine does have a dedicated camera for 2d things so if i just select my camera I can change this to be orthographic and everything is going to be flat. So if I just go play, this is Unreal Engine in orthographic mode. Everything is flat. If you want to change how zoomed in or 
zoomed out it is, we can just go and open it up and play with the author width. So if I make this something like um, 200, then go compile and play, it's very close. We can change this to something like, let's make it a thousand. But the further we make this away, the more zoomed out our camera is going to be. Or you can just use the perspective and adjust the um, spring arm if you want to adjust how close or far um, the camera is. You can use either method. Oh, and one other thing. You may see that the game is kind of blurry in this mode, like I'm seeing right now. In order to fix that, we can go over to edit project settings. And we're gonna go over to anti-analyzing. Um, it uses this one, the temporal super resolution. If we change this to FXA, or it's one of these settings, it makes it so it's clear. Okay, yeah, so that one, FXA, and you can see everything is a lot um, clearer now. And then one more um, issue, you may um, realize when the character steps off a ledge like this, the camera can be kind of snappy. In order to fix that, let's go back to our night blueprint, over to character movement, and in the details, look for max step height. So right now it's 45. Let's make it something really um, low, like one, and compile this. Go play. Whoops. Go play. And I shouldn't get that um, issue anymore. Nice. So now we've made a very simple 2D game inside of Unreal Engine. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and learned a lot. And one more thing, for easier um, editing, if we just go over to Edit, then Project Settings, go over to Maps and Modes, and um, go to Default Map, and for the Editor Startup Map, change this to be Level 1. Now when you open up this Unreal Engine project, it's going to take you straight to this level when you um, open up your project, if you want to work on it again. So, that's all for this video. Hopefully you've learned a lot. If you want the project files, and also want to learn how to create other games like a 2D platformer, an FPS game, and more, make sure to subscribe to my website, Unreal University. There'll be a link to it in the description of this video. With that said, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.